This is a video that, as a filmmaker, you never want to make. I hated my first feature film, The Long Con. I haven't talked about it publicly, so let's break it down. I uh, started writing the script called Carnal Pleasures. We adapted it into another script called The Long Con. And the writing process was interesting, to say the least. Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, nearly broke my friendship with uh, Joel Dick, uh, my cinematographer. We uh, got together at a, a steak and shake and like, this was like friendship level ending stuff. We were debating how the film was going to end. And this was a very tense moment early on. Um, we got through it and it was overall a good experience in the writing other than that, but we were very passionate. And uh, to say that it wasn't tense from the beginning would be a lie. Uh, there was definitely a lot of tension there. I think good creative tension, but also some toxic, uh, just kind of like being so passionate about something that you let it affect personal relationships. We then gathered together what I think is possibly the best crew we possibly could have ever gotten. We had fantastic actors, Anna Dvorak, Charles Johnson, um, Jonathan Wyatt, so many cool people that are to this day like my favorite actors and people to work with. But to say production wasn't a fun situation, but also a nightmare, it would be a lie as well. When we made the film, we shot it over 30, I think 30 days. And I wasn't just the director, I was the producer on the film as well. And I knew a lot about directing, but I had no idea how to produce a film and producing a film like The Long Con was extremely stressful because you have multiple people's schedules you're balancing, you're balancing the location schedule, you're balancing the schedule of your actors, you're balancing the schedule of your cinematographer, of you, basically everyone so that you can get onto a set for one day. And when you have a lot of ensemble scenes, it is not easy and it was extremely stressful. And for the two to three months we shot it, it was basically nonstop stress. We actually even broke a window at the location. I remember um, there were some other personal details that were happening in Joel's life at the time that he couldn't really be involved. And I had to go and pay a window guy $500 when I had very little money uh, to help make sure that the window was fixed or we would lose the location most likely. I, I never really thought about it too much, but once I went through it, it was just a very hard process. But we wrapped, we had a lot of fun at the end, we got everything done and we ended on some simple like B-roll shoots, which was very easy to do. And we went into editing and I remember telling myself, okay, this is gonna take like two months and then we're gonna be done and then we're gonna do audio and then that's it. So it ended up taking like four or five months to edit the film and every day was like an editing nightmare. <laughs> I love editing. Everyone knows me, who knows me, knows that I love editing. It's my favorite thing. But this was a task that I just wasn't prepared for. I did not know how I was going to edit and assemble a bunch of little scenes and then put them together. So I was just figuring out as I went along. Editing and every step of the way, it just didn't feel intuitive to me because we waited to the very end. Usually when I edit stuff, I edit as I go along. But with this film, we decided we're gonna edit after we're all done shooting. And this was possibly the absolute worst thing you can do as a filmmaker. Do not edit after you've finished the film because if there's any changes you wanna make, all of those choices are now in the editing room and you have no ability to go and bring back, back people on set, especially if they have different schedules or they've moved. And that was a situation that really put us in a bind because we had what we had and we had no ability to change it. So we finished the film, the edit, and then I send it off to Joel to do audio for like a month or two. In like winter, me, Joel, and Ed, my AC, got together and we watched the film and it was possibly like the worst thing you could possibly watch as an indie filmmaker. You just feel like your heart has been ripped out. It was my very first feature film. It's this two and a half hour like mess. Um, you can watch the full cut on Patreon. It's like a like the 
assembly cut. It's one of the worst things I've ever put, put together. <laughs> just because it was like, oh my gosh, there's just so much to this film. It's too long. It's too much this, too much that. It's too confusing. So we somehow cut that down from like two and a half hours to 90 minutes. And I, and I felt a lot more satisfied. I felt like, oh man, this is actually a pretty good cut of the film. And we watched it and it felt a lot more satisfying. It's what ended up being the full cut of the movie. And I was happy with that cut uh, until we started listening to the audio. We started sorting through and really paying attention to the quality and everything was impossible to hear because we filmed in a location with very, very high ceilings. Uh, so the audio with in combination of the mic we had just didn't work. It completely didn't work. So in the summer of 2019, this was uh, nearly two years after we started writing and then shooting it, we decided to make a full ADR pass, literally replace every single sound, every footstep, every cough, every word, every wind sound. We decided to replace all that. So we recorded all the ADR in 2019 to do that. And that was such a grueling process that we waited a while until 2020. <laughs> and we're like, oh, 2020, we're gonna have plenty of time to meet up um, and work on that. And then 2020 happened. And basically me and Joel didn't see each other the entire year. We waited a whole year and I made another film, Sheep Theater, to sort of get over all that. In 2021, we finally finished the audio editing. And it was at the point where I was so bummed on the project, so tired that I was literally doing color correction like days before we were gonna upload the film. I literally did like 24 hours straight of of color correction just to get it done. I didn't care. I was just extremely tired. I just put it all together real fast. And it's one of the things that gets the most praise in the film that I've seen a lot of the comments. And it's just, it's hard for me because I, I know I did good work on it, but I know I could have done better work. I know I could have been better the color correction because I, I really only did it in one day and I just rushed it. And I, I know for a fact, if I had put in that effort to go a little further, it would have looked a lot better. Um, and the audio was just a nightmare. And I, I, I basically left it to Joel. I just said, I don't care what it sounds like. Just once we get all the sounds in, you're just gonna do the mixing. I don't even wanna hear the mixing. I just wanna hear it when we're done um, because I just couldn't do it. I was like, we have just done too much audio editing. You just need to listen to it. I will trust you. And I never really heard the mix until we showed it to uh, some family and friends. Um, and my first reaction to the film was just like, okay, this is the movie. Uh, you know, and I, I could say I, I kind of hated it, uh, if I'm being honest. And it reflects in the promotion of the film. I dropped the film in February. And for my film, Sheep Theater and, and Chlorine, I made tons of dozens of videos promoting each. I didn't make a single video <laughs> to promote the long con because I think I was just tired. I was really tired. And it was a movie I didn't feel fully satisfied with because I feel like I let down the actors. I feel like I let down the script. I feel like I could have done better work. And it was really hard to admit those things. And I think I just didn't want to make a whole media tour of like, this is how great my movie is when I didn't really feel that way. And it's been a couple months since then. And I feel like my opinions have changed a little bit. I, I like seeing the movie. I, I've seen it. I've seen little clips of it now and I can watch it and like disassociate with like the terrible ADR process, the terrible editing process. I, I don't like love watching it but like I can definitely stand it now and I can see where people really like it and I think like the story really shines still and I think like the acting really shines I think people like Charles and Anna and Jonathan just did and Chloe did fantastic work I don't think I'm ever going to be happy with like the mistakes I made I'm always going to see the little pops in the audio and the weird hissing on one clip that's not in the next because we had to use camera audio and I'll never not be able to see those mistakes. But I'm able to get past that and I think it was part of my journey. And so I used to hate my 
debut feature film. I'm okay with it now. And I, I respect the work that we all did as a crew. And I just want to tell you guys, like, it's okay to not love your first film. It's okay. Like, if you don't love it, you don't have to have this whirlwind experience like every film is amazing. Sometimes a film is just a film you shot in order to get to the next film. And I think a lot of the work we did on Chlorine and Sheep Theater was because of the work we did on The Long Con. And I don't think we would have had that good quality work without that. And, I, and I'm always thankful for that. So thanks guys for checking out this video. Subscribe. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll do some more videos on Long Con.